Okay, let's look at this problem here. Suppose that a simple random sample of size n equals 36 is obtained from a population with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 12. Describe the sample and distribution of x bar. So because we have a um, an n that's bigger than 30, I believe that this text uses 30 as the um, sort of the threshold to cross, we can assume that it's going to be um, approximately normal. So that's part A. So part B through D is usually where the questions come, so let's look at this. So what is the probability that x bar, that my sample mean, is greater than 77.1? Always, 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 always. Draw a curve. Hopefully I'm emphatic about that. I've seen too many times, particularly in the on-ground class, when students give me a test and they have problems like this and they don't draw a curve. I'm pretty good at these and I draw a curve. So you need to draw a curve out and just get things labeled. So there's our mean. It says the mean is 75. I'm going to pop a 75 right there. The standard deviation is 12, but we've got a sample size of 36. So we have to find what's called the standard error. And so that little standard error, the formula for that is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So my sample size changes. Sorry, the, sample, the standard deviation in a sense changes when I've got a sample. So it's the sampling distribution, right? So I'm going to have sigma, which is 12, divided by the square root of 36. So this is 12 over square root of 36 is 6, which gives me 2. That's nice. So sigma of x bar is 2. Okay, so what do I want? It says greater than 77.1. So I just put 77.1 on the curve and shade. And so we use the normal CDF in here. Now, the old way to do it was to convert all of these to z scores. So you convert 77.1 to a z score, you look it up in the table, and then you'd have to subtract out and get it. But the calculator does all this for us. So my syntax is going to be. And normally, I even in the on-ground class, I have students write this down. So I'll turn it on. And so I'm going to have the normal CDF. So this distribution, normal CDF. Remember, it's left bound. So in this case, 77.1, comma right bound, which goes out to infinity, right? So it's the one, and then we press second. EE e, 99 go out to infinity comma mean which is 75 comma standard deviation which is 2 and we get 0.1468 or 69 if I'm rounding so 0.1468 I recommend on your paper to write everything down. So you'll actually write down what I put in the calculator. So you write down norm CDF. That way you'll kind of know what you were, you were doing. 77.1 comma and keep going. Okay, now in the on-ground class I make I make them do that um, so I can, I can kind of look and see what's going on. Um, you don't have to do that, but I really strongly recommend that. So very similar for part C. So for part C, let me scroll up a little bit. We're wanting to know where is it less than 70.8. Okay. So we'll draw the curve out again. Everything's going to be the same. We got 75. We've already computed sigma of x um, x bar is two. Don't have to do that again. And I forget what it was. Okay, it was 70.8. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. So I just put 70.8 somewhere to the left of 75, and it wanted it to be less than. 
less than or equal to or less than does not matter at all with continuous distributions. It did with the discrete, right? When we're looking at binomial, we really had to know if it was if it included those. Um, but with discrete, we don't have to. So that is an eight. So what's it going to be? I'm going to have normal CDF. Let me clear this out. So normal CDF. Left bound is actually negative infinity this time, right? So let me pop that negative key in here. So negative 1 E99, comma, go up to 70.8, comma, the mean, 75, comma, 2. So we get 0 0.01786. Now you can, if you don't like, like if you're doing a problem and it has to get around to four decimal points and you don't really feel like rounding, you can always change that, right? Go to mode and put this on four, right? And it'll automatically round for you. Um, rounding's not too hard, but sometimes if you're doing a bunch of them, they're all of them are asking you to four decimals, that saves us a little bit of a headache there. So that, whoop. That one's going to be point zero one seven nine. Okay. And this last one, I'm assuming, is similar in between seventy two point one and seventy eight point six. So again, draw a curve. We do our thinking with the drawing the curve and drawing things out, kind of like in geometry when you used to have to label um, squares and rectangles and circles. We did that, so we didn't have to think about it. It was written down. So this was in between 72.1 and 78.6. I think that's right. Okay, so I'm going to put this in. Now a little trick, and I'm sure I've shown this to you before. You can press second enter. It'll pull up what you just did if you don't feel like you're having to retype all that. Okay, so we're at 72.1, comma, 78.6. Now I'm going to insert the rest of this, 78.6, comma. And now I've got the 70 point. Okay. And I think that's it. Press Enter. 0.8905. So I hope that helps. Um, this is a hard section. It's one of the harder sections that we do in the whole book. So definitely watch those videos. Watch this video. Uh, if you've gotten this far, you obviously had. And email me through that Ask My Instructor button whenever you have any questions at all. That's the easiest way for me to, to help you. Often I'm getting questions like, I'm really confused in here. I'm not really able to give a lot of specific feedback on that, but if you'll use it as my instructor, I can do things like this. Particularly if you email me between, you know, like 9 and 4, I can do a video. If it's, if it's after that, I'm usually at home, and I want to get back to you as soon as I can. I'll often just do a text document. So either way is fine. But um, hopefully you'll use that Ask My Instructor button. That's why it's there, and I will do my best to help you out.